G'day, and welcome back to that new hobby hive. Uh, so, um, I've been uh, been making some slow progress this week. It's been sort of busy in its own way. Um, and I haven't been able to do as much as I would have liked. But I have, 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 have moved on a little bit. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different today as I as I paint uh, these Mark Threes and bring up their uh, the base blues. I thought I'd talk about the the uh, cinema ad the uh, the cinema cinema graphic cinema graphic cinegraphic freaking preview ad for Horus Heresy, and that was the first thing I saw that introduced me to the the series. I saw that and oh, I thought, oh wow, whatever that is. I want to have a bit of that. I want that box, you know. So obviously, advertising it worked. But in uh, once once I actually picked up the box and had a had a uh, started reading it and had a look at some of the bits and pieces, I was shocked to find out that Horace, who is you know the the, uh, the bloke who's doing the uh, the voiceover in that fucking ad, is the bad guy. Because, you know, the few times I had watched that before I uh, bought the box. Uh, well, let me put it this way. Listen to the dialogue. I printed it out, right? Yeah. He starts off and he's all this rumbling, menacing voice. I never wanted this. I never wanted to unleash my legions. Together, we banished the ignorance of the old knight. But you betrayed me. You betrayed us all. Now, that opening sentence, to my mind... Is the uh, well? That's that's a hero with a with a purpose. Someone has betrayed him. He doesn't. I don't know who because I don't know the story. But uh, if someone has betrayed him and he is going to war to right right a mighty wrong, you know, it's a it's a it's a big deal. It's a, it's it's a noble sentiment. The next part, he goes. You stole power from the gods and you lied to your sons. So whatever chap he's talking about, he's um, he's a thief and and a liar and and obviously a bad guy, you know. From from that one statement alone, mankind has only one chance to prosper, and you will not seize it. And if you do not seize it, then I will. So let there be war from the skies of terror to the galactic rim. So obviously that gives it scale. But it also sounds like, you know, the uh, the bloke he's talking to has the opportunity to save mankind and is refusing to do so. So this man with his big menacing voice and the big scary armour is taking up the mantle. He's going to war against whoever this chap is to save mankind. Big, epic. This is a, this is a hero's speech. This is a man who's trying to save people. You know, that's how, that's how it sounded to me when I watched the cinematic, cinemagraphic, cinemagraphic, cinematic trailer. Fuck, got the word right. Thank fuck for that. Um, so then he goes on. Let the seas boil, let the stars fall. Though it takes every last drop of my blood, I will see the galaxy freed once more. And if I cannot save it from your failure, Father, then let the galaxy burn. Now, there's a man, like, every drop of my mud, oh, blood, or I will see the galaxy freed. That's not, that's not the statement of a monster. That's a statement of a, of a hero with a fucking quest, freaking, that's just going to be near impossible to undertake. It's, I, I came away watching, from watching that preview, that, thinking that that big dude in the armour, although he was nice and big and fucking terrifying looking, because... Let's face it, he, he ruthlessly kills that dude in yellow. Uh, you know, he's wounded, but the dude in yellow tried to strike him first. So obviously, a bad guy. You know? Um, yeah, it just... If you're not... If you're not au fait, or you don't know much about the story, then you watch that, well, as I did. That is... Um, Horus comes across... As the as the good guy, the one with the mission to accomplish, the uh, the one who's going to save mankind. He literally even says it in the thing, in the in the preview. I'm going to go, you know, save mankind. If you won't let mankind prosper, you know, if the galaxy isn't freed from your tyrannical grip, then I'll burn it to the ground because obviously it's not going to be in a good shape. And it needs to be pulled down. 
I came away thinking that Horace was going to be a fucking... Well, not Horace. I didn't know his name at that point because at no point is the Emperor mentioned. At no point is Horace mentioned other than no, the, the title card. So it's just some big, scary dude who's freaking going to, you know, obviously the scale of the thing, you know, universal war to, uh, to free humanity. And I go, oh, bloody hell, what a, what a switcheroo. Because um, how much advertising do Game Workshop do Games Workshop do when they they're not they're advertising to people who know the story? They're not advertising to fucking poor buggers like me who have fucking no clue. And that's the ninety percent of the population who have no clue about the universe whatsoever. And um, they're going, oh, fucking, we'll sell to the people who we already selling shit to. You just know the story. We ain't going to change it. We aren't going to freaking elaborate on it. This is this is what you get. This is what you're getting. So you walk into it, and it's a bit of a fucking slap in the face finding finding out all this when when you're just starting to read. Uh, you know, Horace comes across with it. The talk, I'm just going to call him the talking chap because until he had, he developed a name uh, in the in the like the first half of the rule book, he he was the hero in my mind as I bought the box and I wanted to play his army. Except the, uh, I found out later that his army, you know, the um, Sons of Horus, is actually the same colour as uh, an Australian cigarette packet. Oh, oh fuck that, then, a gross colour. But the, um, yeah, no, I, 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 was, I, was, I was shocked. But, you know, I got into it, figured it all out. But I would think you shouldn't have to figure it out. Something like that should be obvious, if you're trying to market something to someone new, to someone who doesn't know it, you know, you don't just go straight into Star Wars with someone who doesn't know Star Wars and go, oh, by the way, this is um, this is Anakin Skywalker who's going to be the big bad guy in the third series. And you all know that already, so we're just going to go straight in and, and then talk about Obi Wan Kenobi. You know, it's, it's you need to sort of melt that in. Anyway, um, that's my uh, that's my thoughts and how I got into it. I, th- I saw that ad and I thought I want that, and then that was my reaction afterwards. You know, holy shit, he's not the good guy. He's actually a dick. Because you know, Emperor's not mentioned. Horus is only in the title card. I don't know if that's the bloke's name until until I actually bought the fucking box. Anyway, what else is happening? Uh, I haven't been able to get a lot of work done. I'm still waiting for some bits and pieces. Uh, these. Mark 3s are a lot slower to paint than the Mark 6s. They uh, have so much more edge highlighting and detail. This has only just been base blued over the over the shade. So I still need to pick up a lot of the edges. But just, you know, the trim. Just reach under here, try not to knock everything off. You know, you've got the, uh, the, the gold trim above and below. It's, it, it takes time takes a little bit of time. So these are slower than the Mark 6s. i still got to figure out what goes in each, each shoulder pad. I mean, it makes sense on the Mark 6. This one's gold studs, and that's the uh, Omega. This one, I don't know. Maybe I might even put something on his chest. It's a nice big piece there. But I like the backpack, and there's a lot of edges and details to pick out, and lots of little studs. I'm not really sure if I'll be picking out the studs yet, whether it'll make it look too complicated, because there's quite a few of them around the kneecaps and the shoulders and around the greaves. But it's coming along nicely. Extras are happening. Um, the Rabuti, the Primark. Um, now, I'm order, I've ordered some bits for this chap, especially these two standards, because they're resin. So I've ordered some uh, brass rod because... Uh, oh, the resin, it will get snapped and soft and, and it'll just, you know, it's warm. Even in this room, it's 30, let me just look, 34 degrees in here. Because I can't be fucked turning the air conditioner on because that would involve walking downstairs and I am a lazy fuck at heart. But yeah, I'm using brass rods. I'll cut all these off and I'll, I'll fix them onto the brass rod and remake the straps for the base. So I'm still waiting for some bits and pieces before I continue on with that. Uh, I'm hoping to have some of these all painted up and uh, maybe maybe even try and get a game before the weekend. Anyway, not a not a not a stunning update. I'm so sorry. 
But it's um, it's just just some random thoughts and uh, yeah, and and a slight update on how it's going. I should have these. I've only only really had about two three hours of these since the last video. It's just been super hectic. So hopefully I'll get these kicked in the dick before the next video. Anyway, you all take care of yourselves. Love a lot of you. Ciao.